Hi, my name's Alex Walford. I'm a solutions engineer for Streamsets, and in this short video, I want to show you how you can handle schema drift in Hive using Streamsets Data Collector. We're going to start off with a nice clean canvas here, and the first origin I'm going to add is a, a dev data source raw, and I'm going to give this some data. Um, so this is going to contain the name of my first son, Miles. Uh, he's 12. Stop after first batch. So this is going to send one record through. Now the next thing I want to do is add a couple of um, values to the header of this record as it goes through. So these are going to be the, uh, um, the database, database and the table name. So the database is going to be default and the table name table name is going to be drift example if i click on the uh, preview button here i don't actually need to have a fully formed uh, pipeline in order to throw some sample data at it so if i look at this record i can see that here are my um, header values that I set, default and uh, the table name drift example. The next thing I want to do is add the, the uh, meta, Hive metadata processor. Now if you look at this it has two outputs, one of them is data and one of them is metadata. And so the uh, data, so we're going to get a couple of uh, destinations here, uh, the data is going to go to the Hadoop file system destination and the metadata is going to go to the Hive Metastore. Let's just connect those things and uh, tidy them up. You'll notice that we have a few things to configure here. So let's start with the Hive Metadata uh, processor. Let's say the data format is going to be Avro. What else have we got in here? So I'm using an HDP cluster, so um, Hive 1.2, um, let's just take a peek at these things. Oh yes, this partition configuration, the data that I'm sending it doesn't have a date in it, doesn't have any uh, way to partition it. This is just an example. In real life, it's very common to partition by time or date or something like that. But just for this example, I'm going to get rid of it. You can see that the database uh, expression is pulling out the, that um, attribute we put in the header, similarly for the table name. And these are being, so let's just uh, see anything I missed there. No, I don't think so. Okay, oh yes, one, one thing I missed. So um, the uh, Hadoop configuration directory. So this is gonna contain files like hivesite.xml. And so in a Hadoop distribution, it's the same for Cloudera. You can pop over to the service. So let's go to Hive here. And under Actions, uh, you can download the client configs. It's going to contain all these files. And I've actually put these on my data collector uh, machine. So if I go to my data collector machine and say locate, you know, hive site.xml, I can see here it is. It's in this folder right here. So I'm going to use that folder to, uh, to populate this uh, the configuration directory attribute there. Same goes for the Metastore. So again, we've got the stage library, Hive 1.2, pop over to the Hive tab. It's asking me for some information. I'm going to use this uh, HTTP conf. Um, so actually, I'm going to put the host name, uh, HTTP for uh, Hive Server 2 here, port 10,000. And actually, the uh, metadata also needs that. And the, there's a username. So the user, in this case, is going to be SDC. Uh, so I'm going to populate that in the uh, Hive metadata and metastore. Let's just have a quick look, see if I missed anything. Stored as Avro. No, looks, looks good to me. OK. Very good. So the last thing we have to configure is the uh, Hadoop file system destination. The data format is going to be Avro. 
the output files. This is really important. So you can specify a path, um, but it's better if um, it gets that path from the Hive metadata. So it's in, in the record header. So I'm going to check this header box. See, as I check this box, the uh, this, this directory template thing disappears. Um, so we don't need to configure that anymore. It's, that's uh, done for us. Uh, the the uh, Avro needs uh, the schema, and the schema is going to be in the record header. Um, let's see what else. What have I forgotten here? Oh, yes. So the uh, Hadoop file system uh, has a configuration directory, just like Hive. So again, you'd pop over to HDFS and you know download the client configs, put them on your data collector node. So in this case, I'm going to say locate, uh, I don't know, core site.xml. Uh, see where that is. So that is in Hadoop Conf XCHDP Hadoop Conf. So I'm just going to pop this in here, um, and the the uh, username. So the user user is going to be SDC, and then I think that's it. I think we're good to go. Let's just pop over to uh, Hive, and SDC. Show tables. So there are no tables in Hive. One last quick check. Oh yeah, stage library should be HDP 2.6, um, and then I think we're good to go. So let's let's run this pipeline. Um, so far so good. Okay, that ran. So let's go to Hive here and say show tables. And if I do a select star from this table, we should see one record in there. OK, so you can see that uh, the table was created and the schema was based on the JSON document. Uh, and if I do a describe, you'll see that the age, for example, um, is uh, an integer, I think. Yeah, so it knew that that was an integer and adjusted the schema accordingly. Now let's send another record through with a slightly different schema. So if I, I have a slightly different uh, record here, let's go and pop him in here. So this one has phone number. So this is me. I'm actually 43 now. Um, so if I run this, so that ran. Let's pop over, have another look at the table do a select star and you'll see now that the uh, schema has changed the um, the metadata detected that the record um, that it was going to insert was slightly different um, than the existing uh, schema and and ran an alter table statement and adjusted the schema on the fly so this is how we can handle data drift this is really common for you know things like IOT for example where um, maybe the uh, the format of the messages that you're getting changes and this by using something that handles this drift automatically it gives your um, processes a lot more resilience than something that would just break if you're working on a fixed schema. So I hope that was helpful. That was a quick introduction to handling schema drift uh, in Streamsets Data Collector. Thanks ever so much for watching.